Um, yes, so good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome. Um, my name is Matthijs Jonker, and I'm the Director of Studies in Art History here at the Royal Netherlands Institute in Rome, the CNIR. Uh, and I'm also the um, coordinator of this uh, seminar series, the CNIR Research Dialogues, um, of which we have today uh, the sixth and final session uh, until the summer. And we started this uh, seminar series this semester, and it already has been a quite uh, a success uh, with a lot of interesting speakers and a lot of interesting discussions, uh, which we hope to uh, continue after the summer uh, with a new series. And we continue with the research dialogues uh, in the fall. And the idea of the research dialogues is uh, to invite scholars who work on themes uh, and projects that are related to the CNIR um, central themes and, and research areas uh, to present research uh, in progress, work in progress, um, and to engage in a discussion, fruitful discussion, hopefully with, um, with our audience uh, and also to build on for, for maybe uh, collaborative projects in the future. Um, and today, as I mentioned, is the sixth and final um, uh, session, um, final one until the summer. Uh, we, and uh, we will return, and, as I said, uh, after, the, after the summer in the fall. Uh, so I would like to uh, yeah, ask everyone to, to regularly check our uh, website, our new and improved website, I want to add. Uh, as of yesterday, we have a beautiful new website. Um, so please check that out uh, for the program in the fall. Um, and um, if, you, if you want, you can also su subscribe to our newsletter. And now I would like to give the word to uh, Agnese Fischetti, uh, who is our fellow, one of our fellows here at the Institute. And she is the scientific organizer of this, uh, of this session, of this uh, dialogue. And I would like to give the word to Agnese to uh, present our speaker of today. Thank you, Matthijs. Thank you to everybody. It's really, it's really a pleasure to me introduce Francesca Di Sono. Uh, even if it's very, very difficult to summarize our uh, uh, CV, uh, it's a very impressive curriculum vitae, so I will try, but I will say just a few words, because uh, uh, her scientific activities, I, I follow, I've been following her for a long time, and, uh, and now she, uh, she is very, very um, she developed all of her researches. She started uh, uh, with a PhD in Perugia uh, with the title Trade Between the Upper and Middle Valley, uh, sorry, uh, see, Trade Between the Upper and Middle Tiber Valley and Rome, Gods, Markets and Ports. And from that moment, uh, she, it has been a sort of escalation. So she, um, thanks to lots of grants and fellowship in Italy and on, also on abroad, she, um, she, she obtained uh, the direction or the co-direction of lots of uh, excavation campaign, uh, survey projects, and also she um, has always a keen eyes for the, for the culture material, especially for pottery. So just to say a few of these, uh, just some example. Uh, she was the co-director of the project Between the Mountains and the Tiber, Towers Archaeology of Ancient Sabine, co-director in the excavation campaign uh, of Dania, uh, Diana Sanctuary, director of the, of the survey in Kasha uh, that uh, uh, lead the, the publication of the Carta Archaeologica of Kasha, uh, director of the excavation campaign of the Via Domitia in uh, France uh, and many other, many, many other, obviously many other projects, especially obviously in uh, Fregelle also, uh, the temple uh, along the Via Latina. And uh, she was the organizer of lots of trainship with students uh, in Fregelle, in Nemi. And uh, now she is a uh, assistant professor at the Ludwig uh, uh, Maximilian University of Munich, and she is a researcher at the, at the University of Perugia. Uh, I certainly miss lots of other <laughs> titles and uh, all our publication, but uh, it's, it's a very, very uh, big career, and I'm very happy uh, to introduce her um, speech. Uh, the title is uh, Ongoing Research Projects on the Mid-Republican Colonies 
of Rome in Southern Lazio at Sabina, Tregelle, Terracina and Cascia, Villa San Silvestro. Uh, she will uh, present us three um, case studies uh, of uh, mid-Republican colonies uh, uh, between the third and the cent second century BC. And uh, three, three cases with uh, which uh, she is very um, familiar, having uh, organized several excavation campaigns there in, in Fregelle and uh, also in, um, in Terracina. I'm very curious about the, the new data from this uh, last excavation. And uh, it will be present, um, she will be focused on the link uh, between the relation between the uh, foundation, the design, the design of the city, uh, the uh, religious component. Uh, so I'm very, I'm very um, happy to to go on these uh, these topics. I'm very, I'm very curious. So I don't want to uh, take too much time uh, to to Francesca, uh, just uh, to organize the discussion that I I hope it will be very very intense after her speech, uh, who is interested to, to, to participate to the debate, can uh, rise up uh, his hands uh, in the reaction here, or uh, write something in the, in the, in the, in the chat. And uh, now I can leave the screen to Francesca and, uh, and uh, good speech. <laughs> Thank you, Agnes. I feel so important now. Thank you. I, I hope everything is fine. Do you see my screen? Okay, so I, uh, today I will speak about three projects because I choose this project because I know are in the interest in the project that the your institute develop in this year. So to, to make some a good exchange Work, uh, speaking about romanization and colonization of uh, Italy. So we start from my uh, oldest project in Perugia, in Fregelle, and uh, only to re remember where is Fregelle, we are between uh, Rome and uh, Capua, along the, the Via Latina and in the Liri Valley, so inside Italy. And to remember that Fregelle is a colony of Rome, um, and it was destroyed by the same Rome uh, two, two centuries uh, after. So it was a very, one of the most important colony in, um, in Italy, one, one of the important Latin colonies. And this, is for, this was the problem because of the Latin rights and not the Roman citizenship they asked to they were destroyed in the 125. It was a day of a peak of aristocracy and we see it from the, the domus. But uh, these are the areas excavated by the University of Perugia in a, lo a lot of time. And we have only, two, uh, only three publication. One is the Sanctuary of Esculapio with the, the H. Another is the geography of the area. And the third book is from uh, to, um, since two years published and it's about the temple of the forum and the, temp the suburban uh, temple along the Via Latina. This is to remember you the shrine of Esculapius was a very uh, old publication in the eighties. And um, now we focus, uh, the excavation focused on the Domus, uh, this is the forum and the Comitium. The, there is not the, te, the temple in the in the forum and the area of the the, the the Cumanus and the area of the Domus with the archaeological park. This is the area of the archaeological park, so you can visit if you want the Domus and the baths of Regelle. This is the, the, the restoration of one of these big and uh, very uh, luxu luxurious domus of um, this the built between the third and the second century BC. You see the, uh, some pavements to have an idea and of the luxus of this area. And they this this domus have terracotta decoration, so private people, private families with terracotta decoration, remembering the um, history of the cities of the battle in the, in the East, they participate 
and they, they go um, we see the omphalos because they go to Greece and they participate also to war in, in the East. We have a very com a complex situation because the domus have two, fa two, two faces. So uh, why I speak about the domus? Because now we are working on the, uh, on the publication of the domus and the book it will, it will be uh, give to the Academia de Lince at the end of this year. So prepare to have a new book about Fregelle next year, about 20 domus and with the building, the faces, the construction techniques and all the materials of all the domus of the Fregelle. Here are the bats. The bats are not published, but they are visible in the archaeological park with two faces. I remember you, they are the oldest bats in the um, um, western part of the Mediterranean area. This is, we made new excavation. This is an old map because we made a new excavation in 2017. And we can say a lot about um, the history of the, the bats, but we have to, to finish to work on it for the publication. The forum area. Naturally, the forum area is very important if you want to speak about what, what uh, is the idea of Rome, of the city they, they build. So what they give to this colony. Uh, we know only the comitium, the Curia Comitium complex, the, and the, uh, a small temple temple uh, in, the, in the corner of the forum. This is maybe not the more important uh, temple, but it's the only one we know. We uh, hope to go further excavating in the Forum of Fregelle. And it was also in very bad condition because there is no, 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 not many um, layers on the structure. So they have problems with the ag agricultural activities. So about what is it interesting, I think, for here, for the people on the Forum of Fregelle is the decoration of the Forum because we have not many we have uh, two phases of decoration, architectonical decoration, speaking about the, the, the wealth and the history of the city, but we have um, a very peculiar um, um, style of podium. You know, the podium of the temple is the, the, the basement of the temple dedicated to, to the deity. And you can see it a sequence of real Latin cities, not colonies, so city like Ardea and Preneste, A and B, and this is two podium of the two Latin city about the fifth century BC, and from C to F, podium of Latin colony made between third and second century BC, almost third. What you see, they are very, very similar, but they have two centuries of difference. And when Rome made this type of podium in the colony, so in Fregelle, Sora, Villa San Silvestro, we speak later about Villa San Silvestro and this area, they, this type of architecture was very old fashioned in Rome. And no, we have no temple in Rome with this type of um, podium. But what they, what they want to do in these new cities of Rome, in the new uh, foundation of Rome, give an idea of uh, old architecture of Latin world. So they decide to, to like a, a colony starter pack, the temple in the Latin colony in the third century are uh, similar to the temple to the Latin cities of the fifth century. We have uh, so many um, uh, there are so many um, concepts about this. The, the, the idea to live in a city oldest than a colony, to, to build something familiar to the colonies. But it, I think it's very interesting to see that sequence and to understand how, um, how also the architectonical style is as a language that Roman used to make more Latin, Latin colonies. So they decided to build temple, Latin fashion, old style, and not uh, modern, uh, modern Roman style. We go further and go to the, the temple of the forum outside the city. 
and uh, we find it from um, magne magnetometer, but it's a very old magnetometer about 20 years ago. This is the publication of the two temples. To, uh, so if you want also more information, you can also see the book or speak with me later. This is the plan. So you see a very small temple without a podium. This is also important. A, a, a channel for water, so many channels from water and maybe a, a small uh, building. What we start to um, uh, working on ancient maps, we, uh, we know that near the temple there was um, a source of water now is lost because of the construction of the new um, route between Rome and Naples. But we have a, a, there was a source near the temple. This is because we have a lot of channels. The, archi the architectonical decoration uh, leads to um, a female, female deities. And, but we find also these votive materials very, very early. So we can't link these uh, materials from 7th and 6th century BC to the temple of the 3rd century BC. We need something more. Uh, we have to, to um, understand more about the, what, is part, um, what is the situation in Fregelle territory before Fregelle, so before the foundation of the colony. Naturally, the more, the more easier uh, explication is that the, pres the presence of the source make um, a typical uh, sa sacred area. So this um, votive gives us linked to this source. But who was living in the territory of Regelle between 7th and 6th century BC? Because it's not the time of the, the Volsk, Volsci people. They would need still uh, neither know some niti, what the um, Roman sources speak about Latins, Oshi, and so other people more linked to Latins. And we have to see that this type of votive gifts are more similar of la to Latin culture than not to other type of central literary culture. So I search for the publication of the other materials oldest that Fregelle, so like this uh, Terracotta Architectonica of the sixth century and Booker of Pottery and, terra and from the Comitium area. So we can start to say that there is a city before Fregelle, but it is not a city of the, the Volsci or a city of the Saniti, it's the oldest city. And this city, they have no life in the 5th century BC and in the 4th century BC because we have no material. So we have a lack of information between the, the war between Volsci and Saniti in this, uh, in this plain. And uh, we have to re re reconsider the situation. You see in the map, maybe Arce and Rocca d'Arce, Ceprano, Falvaterra, and Fabrateria. Maybe if you see this, Fabrateria, Falvaterra, Fregelle, the modern Ceprano, Arce, Rocca d'Arce. So we have two um, Volscan city, Rocca d'Arce and Falvaterra, but they are later of these materials in the, in the Roman of the 7th and 6th century BC. So nat naturally it's to, to not enough to make a new history of this area, but it's something that um, allow us to, uh, to start to, to um, develop a new ide idea of the Southern Latium before the colonization and before the wars with the Samnites and to st uh, start thinking who was living uh, there. And we will uh, speak about this, um, uh, this problem also later. Then uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy because I see Marlene Termer now at the conference because uh, I have also to study the votive gifts and uh, to have an interpretation also, you see, fertility offering gift and um, it's not not so peculiar maybe it's the astragalus the statue with an astragalus interesting because of 
uh, um, changing status of um, be, um, young, from young people to adult people. But uh, we have also a lot of pottery. So what can we can make about uh, this pottery to understand uh, um, something more about um, this temple where the stratigraphy was so damaged from ancient excavation of the 19th century. So I start with this uh, quantification that Berlin Termer made about what it gives in Latin colonies. And I take the idea to um, apply this uh, new approach to uh, our materials in Fregelle. So I make the same, so the quantification of motive, motive materials by class. But I start also to make some, um, to go more further because I have more information. I have also all the, all, the, all the pottery to understand. So not only the votive materials, but also the other materials. So you see that the votive gifts are very uh, important, but also some classes of pottery are important from a, from a statistical point of view. And not all, so we have a lot of cooking pottery and not some, and a lot of uh, drinking and eating pottery. Not many amphora, for example, not many, a parfum bottle of lamps. So lamps or parfum are not very important in this sacred area, but something um, was more linked to also to wash themselves because the basin, water basin are more uh, than a normal quantity we find in a temple. So they, they was also important uh, wash people and was also important mortaria. So prepare food to, to cook. And then I start a quantification of the materials by function to understand what kind of actions they perform on this temple, on this temple. And um, I hope this give uh, this was a part of the of the um, demonstration or the attribution of the, the temple to um, Bonadea, but we can also speak about this later. So Bonadea was an important cult in a Latin colony because they need uh, Bonadea to have the new generation of colonists. So we go to Villa San Silvestro di Cascia. This was a small project beginning with the, um, the festival linked to the 200, uh, 2000 year after the, the, the born of Vespasianus. So Vespasianus co come from Sabina and uh, the University of Perugia start small project and small excavation on Sabina to have a better understanding of this territory that uh, from uh, which come Vespasianus. You see Sabina is in the Apennine and also uh, now is very uh, underestimate region, ancient region, because also now is divided between Lazio, uh, Abruzzo and Umbria and in the middle of the mountain. So it's also difficult to make project there. We see that the red point is Villa, uh, is Villa San Silvestro. Oh, maybe there is a problem. No, it's not the red point. You see the name Villa San Silvestro. You see Rieti and the Via Flaminia and the Salaria. So we have, uh, we, we are, Villa San Silvestro is about 1,000 uh, 200 meters on the on above sea level, so we are. It's cold. It's difficult also to to have a, a normal agriculture, but there is a plain. So it's uh, the second plain of all the island. The first is the city of Nurcia, the, that you know maybe for the recent earthquake there was. We know that in Villa San Silvestro, this small uh, village uh, with uh, 14 inhabitants near Kasha, there was a big Roman temple. So we start to um, try to understand the history of this big temple. And you see the same type of podium of Fregelle. And with, with the first excavation, we understand better the, um, the development, the, archite the architectonical development on this temple that have two faces. In the one in the third century and another on the beginning of the first after a big earthquake. So this is the second phase with the decoration. And uh, um, 
the also here a, a, a small fragment of the cult statue from uh, maybe from Hercules. But working in Villa San Silvestro shows us in this year more uh, information as the well we already know. So we see in the field more structure near the temple and also from the other an, uh, another field more uh, uh, again and again more structure. So we start a big project of uh, six years and um, with uh, 40 weeks of excavation and now the, the book is ready for the publication is already given to the um, uh, print. So we are waiting these weeks to have the book in our hand. This is the book we are very, <laughs> and the index to make more promotion. But you see, it's a very complex history, the, the one in Villa San Silvestro, because we have a big phase from a um, chronological phase uh, of the mid and late Republic uh, period and early Imperial period and the second phase in late antiquity and early medieval period. But don't worry, we don't, are not speaking of this now. We have two area also about uh, the, with the same chrono chronological uh, development and the Iron Age village above seeing, saying us, the two area A and B, the area A have this big temple and um, we identify uh, is like a forum so it's an um, ad administrative unit in the area of uh, colonists. Mm, and uh, we, they have made something like a basilica. And the, the schema is uh, the one of the forum, but we have no other buildings around the forum. And the forum is, um, ad from an ad administrative point of view, depends direct from Rome. The B area is the area of the Vicus, where live the Latin uh, Viritani colonists. So we have there the house, the small houses of the colonists and a small uh, public area that in the century becomes big and big covering the other part of the B part of the settlement. This is a uh, area, the forum area you see the, how the porticos goes around the temple and the reconstruction made by Alberto Lanotte of the second phase of the temple, or the portico and the temple. So it's a very uh, big um, system because it representing the power of Rome, Rome conquest the Sabina at the beginning of the third century and was the bigger uh, territory that this, um, or it, this period conquered by Rome, but it was conquered to give um, 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 to make centuration to give to colonists. And this is a, a, a type of colonist that is the Viritan colonists. So give directly to the person, not founding a city, because with this type of landscape, is not easy to have cities. City have no sense in between the mountains. So it's an, another type of um, of living. So we, we see the there's two phases of the porticos because also of the uh, very frequent earthquakes in the portico. And we also have one of the um, chippi of the terminatio. So one of the Centuration chippy, and this was reused in the portico of the second century. So we can give them the, the chronology to this about the, the third century. So uh, immediately uh, after the conquer, and you say another two example of this terminatio uh, in in the village uh, near. Villa San Silvestro. So we have a system of organization on the landscape directly after the conquest of Rome, beginning from the tratturo and the, the, the dividing of the, of the field between the public field and private field to give to the colonists. And you see the axe of the tratturo in red and the axe of the centuriazio in black of this plane 
between, between the, the mountain. And then they build, they start with this, this, um, the tratturo and the division of the land. Then they build the monumental temple with after, after a development with the porticos. And then in the area B, they made, you see that in red, the house of the colonists with a small public area. It's uh, made on clay, so the structures are made with in terra cruda, opus crementicium, and um, stones. And you see the how the layers was near in, in the, the sequence of the layers were very complex because we have about uh, 1,000 years in uh, 50 centimeters, so it's very, very difficult. So this is the, the plan of the, um, the, house, the, um, the house of the colonists in the south part of the area B. And we have the structure, you see there are one or two room buildings with uh, a lot of uh, votive deposit under, under the level of the pavement. So every, every house at this votive deposit, votive foundation deposit, uh, deposit, and every house have a different votive foundation deposit because every family decide what was better in this, maybe in this uh, particular idea of religion and so, and they are colonists coming from Lazio. So the first uh, generation of colonists coming in this area from Lazio take the pottery from Lazio with them. So we have pottery made in Lazio that we find only in the first layers of the, this vicus because after they start to produce pottery also, so they start the um, pro uh, production of, of goods, so also of pottery. You see um, some details of the seat, the, the house. This is the public area of the vicus with in the center, the first face of the temple. In, uh, in on the, um, the west, something like, I don't want to call it Villa Publica, but something like Villa Publica. So something that have a public role in this uh, vicus. And at east, maybe some deposit or some uh, useful um, building. Also at the foundation um, deposit of this um, public building with a, a small dog burned uh, under the, the door, the trees all. The the, 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 a lot of sequence of all, all the faces of the structure. I don't want to um, be annoying you with this. Also the first face of the temple with the sacrifice inside the, the cell, it's very small temple. Then the, they big, you see in the, in the map, in the second century, they built a big temple with double, uh, double cell temple. So it's also very uh, interesting, the cults of this area, but we don't have now enough, enough time to speak about this. And we, we see here the developing also of the portico around this temple in the, in the, in the centuries. Then I start a survey project in the area of Kasha. And I want only to see, uh, we have in three years, we make 25 sites. You see a lot of pottery. And what I only want to speak about is, is working naturally with all the information I take from the excavation of Villa San Silvestro about the, um, the pottery in the Republican period and the late antique period compared to the materials in the museum. So the Iron Age materials and uh, prehistoric materials in the museum, I can make a um, developing also of the common wear in this territory. So this is an, an example. This is working the, with the materials of the survey, considering only uh, well-dated pottery. So black cross pottery, sigillata, africana, and so. And you see the difference of the faces in two sides. This is working with the chronology of the common wear in this period. So you can go from the handmade pottery and Sab Sabine, so Iron Age pottery, to late antiquity in early medieval common wear. 
and you see more in detail all the different phases of all the, the site. Also, if you are working with surf, uh, pottery from the surface, so survey materials. And so I can see with my uh, first uh, 25 sites, you see the position. We can see how the big was in the Iron Age, in the Roman Republic and Roman Imperial period, in the late antiquity, and in the, in the medieval time. And we also hope to go further with this project because I think it's very interesting, like the project, of, like your project to work on the mountains, to, to understand how was the ancient, living in ancient times in the mountains. And also we have the, uh, an idea of all the, the city, all the village already destroyed by the earthquakes. We have always, every, every, two, thousand, every two centuries, a big earthquake, they destroyed the um, buildings. Then the last project with my colleague, Paul Shedding, the, of the University of Munich in Terracina. Terracina is well known from a topographical point of view because it's the first uh, book of the Forme Italie. So it's something very well, well known. And what um, you can say that in Terracina we know a lot of information, but we can have more and more information and you will see it. So we are also along the Via Appia, but when the Via Appia start to go inside, it's the last part of, on the Tyrrhenic coast. You see the map of Terracina be between the swamps and the mountain, uh, the last mountain coming from inside Lazio and the swamps around Terracina. And a modern map, you see the, uh, um, the city, the long city of Terracina with the forum, the, the, the maybe more, more than once, I'm sure more than one forum the Capitolium theater, maybe the amphitheater, then the, 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 and the Via Appia go uh, through the, the, um, the city and then go up to the mountain to the sanctuary, the big sanctuary on Monte Sant'Angelo. So with my colleague, we also make, the, we decided to um, start our project with the investigation of the, the sanctuary on Colle Sant'Angelo because it's dominating the landscape, but it's also not very uh, well um, studied, not very well published because we have all, um, ancient publication about the sanctuary. And um, we, we understand that there are so, so much to know about this sanctuary and also linked to the, the, the history of the city. And also Terracina is a colony, we know it's from the historical, this is the leader made by Jesus Garcia that you know also, that is well also is a collaborator of you. And um, Terracina is also a Latin colony, but we know that Terracina was um, seated in the histor historical source, also in the first street between uh, Rome and Cartago. But normally, um, this uh, information was considered uh, false. So uh, a reconstruction of um, not, not um, good reconstruction of ancient history. So, but we have, um, Terracina is very, a very big and very important city in the fourth, th third, second, first century BC. So we are one, we can say one of the, the ports from linking west to east of the Mediterranean in the Hellenistic times and also linked to import, import from Africa. So as a very big market, a very big port. And this is the, what we know uh, normally from the, because it was not also a, a plan, a published plan of uh, the sanctuary. And you see the, the different part of the sanctuary. We have the Grande Tempio, Piccolo Tempio, the, the so-called Campo Trincerato. There's a lot to understand about Campo Trincerato. And you see the, the, the wall of the city, the urban wall going to the um, ending to the century. So the century is linked to the city with the urban wall. This big, big um, wonderful panorama of uh, the sun. You see here yeah, the big, the Grande Santuario. It's well known, it's very well visited. We have a lot of photos of it, but, um, and also a map 
um, is more more well known this part than the other part. But the problem is also there is a debate to to which deity was um, consecrated. You see this uh, a, sun, a terrace sanctuary on the mount, like Palestrina, like Nemi, like Tivoli, and so so this big uh, Hellenistic terrace sanctuary. The problem is um, normally we think it's dedicated to uh, Jovis and uh, Jupiter Anxur because of the the um, literary, literary sources, but we have also other possibilities. We have many deities sites in the epigraph epigraphical record and also on the sources. So if you want, maybe later we can speak about the problem of identification of every temple. We have a lot of temple in Terracina, so it's also uh, hard to put every date in every temple. This is uh, our project starts with the small temple, the Piccolo Santuario, because there are no plan of this area and was nobody studied this Piccolo Santuario. We know from the, the we have an idea this is a, sant, a Roman sanctuary, but on all the surface of this Roman sanctuary, we have a, a medieval uh, monastery of the Benedictine monks. So a lot of wall are uh, reused, rebuilt, destroyed. So it's difficult to see the Roman face under the medieval face. This is the, the more no part of this, the more Roman, best preserved Roman part of the sanctuary. And I want also to say that from this year, we start from with the University of Munich, a collaboration with the Università di Bologna, with Enrico Cirelli to excavate the medieval part because we start with it, but we need a specialist. We, we prefer to work together in team with a specialist about this period. And you see a plan made from the Sovrintendenza about the restoration of the, um, the sanctuary in the 80s. And you see the difference with the uh, old photo of the looking of the sanctuary before the restoration and what we have after. So make it more complex to understand the differences between the every, every structure. We know there are, you see the, how, how the, the impact of this restoration on the, on the ancient structure in the, with A and B, we have two the two different level of the this uh, terrace century, and we can say that this piccolo tempio is older than the grande tempio, and is facing the city, not the port, and uh, maybe it's older than uh, we are in the middle of the second century BC, so it's older. For example, of Nemi is older of Tivoli, and so. And um, here is our study. We, we start, for example, searching of the pave, Roman pavements. And with the, the help of Roman pavements, we can reconstruct the plan of the Roman sanctuary under the medieval structure. To give you an example here, uh, you see on, at the um, on bottom, the uh, Roman pavement. So, um, uh, Coccio Pesto pavement over the Coccio, medieval Coccio Pesto pavement and over another um, medieval wall. So we have two phase of medieval building on the Republican structure and everything is covered by the restoration activity of the 80s. So everything is very difficult, but we find a place where it's possible to, to work and we find the temple of the sanctuary and we find all the, the also more faces of the temple and we know the more ancient uh, terracotta architectonica in this temple are from the problem is difficult to make a chronology between 6th and 4th century bc so we have a temple and then the monumentalization of the temple with the um um, the Rad Sanctuary. And then with our um, uh, uh, deeper um, trench, not trench, deeper uh, excavation in a specific point, 
we also find uh, the um, earlier material. So we have material of the Iron Age and also of the Bronze Age. So the um, people uh, was uh, make uh, was living in the area of the sanctuary uh, before the, um, the, the the sanctuary of the second century, before the temple of the fourth sex six fourth century BC, and also in this case we have to ask ourselves who was living in Terra China between. 7th, 6th century BC, and uh, also 8th century BC. So what kind of population was in Terracina? So maybe we have to think that the mentioning of Terracina in the first uh, treat between Rome and Carthago was, uh, was real. So there was a Terracina at, in this period at the end of the 6th century BC. And we hope this year to go further with our uh, work in the Piccolo Santuario and also start new son, son, uh, sondage near the wall in the Grande Tempio in Campo Trincerato to make the project go further and further. And with this, I am finished. So I hope it was not too boring and thank you. Should I say, should I conclude? <laughs> Thank you, Francesca, for your very, very interesting speech, uh, full of uh, different topics, uh, lots of inputs. And also, thank you for the stunning images that you present to us. Uh, you must organize a, a visit for all of us in your sites. Very happy to visit me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know if you told me uh, when there will be the, the next campaign, excavation campaign. So the, the next campaign in Terra China is in September, uh, from the uh, beginning of September to the middle of October. So you have enough time. Yes, <laughs> perfect. Time, I hope. <laughs> okay, so if there are any questions, uh, you can rise up the hands or write in the chat. Does anyone wants otherwise i can i have a question <laughs> okay i don't see anyone so i have a question about the i'm very interested in this period about the material of the uh, 6th century and the uh, 7th 6th century so um i wonder no if, if in the lights of the material that you found uh, in Fregelle and in Terracina of this range of time, uh, I'm talking about 7th, 6th century BC. I, I wonder you know, if you think that it is necessary to reread the, the Latin presence in uh, the Southern Latium uh, in this period, uh, and this, which is the link also with Rome. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, I think uh, we have. There is a lot of work to do about. Uh, we we can say the Iron Age uh, or uh, this period, the archive period in uh, Southern Lazio, because we uh, lack uh, material data. We lack material uh, culture for a lot of time, and now starting uh, finding uh, this type of uh, material culture so linked to, we can say, Latin Roman culture and not to Volscan or some neat uh, pottery, for example, or uh, what it gives, we can uh, imagine there's maybe this information about um, Latin uh, presence in Southern um, uh, Lazio that was for our, from the traditional view, a revendication, a modern, we could say, a modern revendication of the Roman making war against the Samnit, against the Volscan. So the, the fact that the Romans say we, was, we were here before you, maybe as something um, to take more in serious, we can say, we can't say uh, ciao Alberto, we can say that um, there are Roman. I think it's more people uh, that know the Latin culture. So we have to, to be cautious to, to the identification 
but we know, for example, that we have in, in Fregelle a terracotta of the sixth century, and it's difficult to take there is a Volsca, a Volsca terracotta. So who was living there? And uh, I think we need, naturally, this is not something I can do myself, and not also a specialist about this period, but I think we have to work together to share our information and to be more, give more attention to the, the, the material culture of this period because it's common where so maybe a lot of common where of uh, Iron Age is underestimated in Roman, in Roman uh, excavation because we think it's Roman. Naturally, if we have more specialists, it, the specialists ca can identify and made pottery, but uh, it's not. It's not um, also everything is not handmade. We have also the pottery of the first century maybe is uh, diff different. So we are, there is a lot of work to do. And I think it's very interesting to have another point of view about the development, uh, the development of this century in Southern uh, Latvia. Thank you. I, I strongly agree with you about sharing also data because yes. sometimes it's not so easy. <laughs> and uh, I see Marlene Termer that rise up her hands. Yes. So Marlene. Thank you, Agnese, and, and thank you so much, Francesca, for a amazing <laughs> overview of so many interesting projects. I was really impressed. Um, and I have, actually, I have a question about two of them. So I have one question about Fregelle and one question about Kasia. Um, so I wanted to start with Fregelle because, um, well, obviously you showed the graph there that I, I once long time ago made. Um, and, and it's related to what I wrote in that article because um, the reason I compared those photo deposits in that article is that sort of my point in the article was um, that there's actually a lot of differences between the composition of those different photo deposits in different Latin colonies which kind of I used as a, as a starting point to then say, well, maybe we should not only look at Roman influences in these colonies, but also look at what sort of each of them in itself contributes to sort of, you know, cultural change, cultural identity. Um, and, and so I found it really interesting um, that of the, of the voter deposits that I then compared, I also included Norba. And in Norba, we have those bronze sheets, mm -hmm. which are really part of the votive assemblage in the Latin colony itself. And now you showed that in Frigelle, you have them, but you think they belong to, you know, the earlier phase, 6th, 5th century, I suppose. And then you, if I understood you correctly, there's this gap, and only then do you get the votive material of the Latin colony. Um, which is sort of the more traditional assemblage. Mm -hmm. So I wondered um, first sort of how sure are you that there is this gap and wouldn't it be possible that the bronze sheets are actually part of the votive assemblage of the Latin colony as well? So about the min miniaturistic weapons is always a problem because it's difficult to make the datation of it. Yes, but, the, but I mean specifically the the sort of um, human figures in bronze. Yes, yeah. the human yeah. figures in bronze is also um, normally the, the chronology. The, the problem was that the stratigraphy of the Roman votive deposit was completely destroyed. This is also why I try another approach because the um, people around the temple make excavation to take the blocks to use it in the modern homes. So the satire was destroyed. I have to say that some of these figurines, bronze figurines, I found is small, small holes in the ground. So maybe the, the, the stratigraphy, the, the an more ancient stratigraphy was preserved. So we have, the Roman um, level, the third, second century level is completely missed. Mm. But the more ancient level with these bronze figurines in the small holes was preserved in two cases. So maybe this is something, a, a good information for us. And also that uh, we, I also check all the pottery from Fregelle and you see 
we have Bucero, but there, there is not, nothing that we can um, sure put between these two periods. So it seems that in the, in, in, during the war, in this plane was abandoned because it was not safe to live in the plane of Regele, it was more safe to live in the hills. Yeah. So also this votive area was maybe abandoned because people don't tra travel not so much like before. And maybe it was a centrum because we have only uh, materials related maybe to two sacred areas because the terracotta comes from the, the center of the colony. And this votive gifts come from the other temple outside the colony. So we have two temples. And we know uh, with a surveys made around Frigelli that we have, for example, a, um, a settlement of maybe of um, Volscan settlement, or we don't know some not such a not Latin settlement that go farther in the century also during the colony and they have a temple and the temple rest remain also active in the colony period. But the, there are information from survey and I don't make the survey, so I, I can only read what is published. Uh, from, uh, I think it's not, when it's not possible to find a continuity of materials between two periods, we have to, to, um, to speak about a pause. But because we need more information to say there is a continuity. But naturally, I can say that the people um, are going to this small temple in the um, sex, um, five century BC was Latin, was Roman. They have a more Roman style votive, but also in um, uh, in the, I don't, I missed the name now. In the ethnic area, we have votive gifts that are more similar to yeah. Latin gifts, but they are ethnic. Yeah. So maybe we have, we need more information about this population li living near Rome and the and the link with this population with Rome and the reciprocal influences in this southern Lazio area. Um, I think this was the first. Uh, yeah, perfect. No, thanks. Thank you so much. I, I can save the next question for later if other people, I don't want to sort of monopolize the discussion. We have uh, uh, a question uh, before from uh, by Massimiliano Di Fazio and then by Tess Tech. So Massimiliano Di Fazio uh, uh, is in the chat. He said, thank you very much for all this interesting news. May I, I ask some more details about the materials from pre-Roman Terracina? This is so, uh, Massimiliano Di Fazio. Yeah. And then uh, there is Tess Tech. <laughs> <laughs> so I can say to Massimiliano that we uh, draw all the materials from the first and the second campaign of this period, and we start to study it. But I can't give you um, the result of this study because it's already begin. Everything is drawn now, but we need to make some comparison and more study. But we hope next year to can write something about it. and test tech, <laughs> our director. Yes, Francesca, thank, thank you so much. It's really a very, very amazing uh, paper with indeed, uh, especially nice to have this combination of three different areas and um, being affected in very different ways. Um, I was um, thinking about your results in Kasha and um, especially the idea that this Viratang colonists um, were living in Vigus. Um, but you also did research in the area and you found several sites of the, um, let's say, early uh, colonization of, of that area. Um, so I was wondering what type of sites are they and um, what socio-economic model do you propose for, for their survival there? Um, so is this indeed, uh, are those rural sites, for instance, uh, related to the Limitatio? Um, or do you think that perhaps transhumans was a more important um, source of um, economic prosperity? 
Um, and also, yeah, how big are those houses? Um, do you imagine one family living in it or different models? Um, I was uh, very, very curious about that. So ab about the um, Sabin's village, we, uh, I think they, they go further after the um, colonization because village in this type of landscape is the more sensible type of living. So they still uh, live in villages also in the Roman times. And they remain with, the, the, um, uh, with sacred area and activities. And the Sabins, we know, from literary sources, also they are more uh, li linked to um, transhumans because also this type of landscape is also now agricultural function is only to give food to the animals because the production of food is not good. And we see also in the developing of the um, uh, site of Villa San Silvestro, we lost uh, colonist because it was not enough for live because it's hard the we know the weather was better than now from a meteor from a, was not so cold like now in this mountain but it was also difficult to produce a lot uh, they um, it's not possible to to have the fame the maybe the third generation of colonists had no enough space so they leave, maybe or they begin to, to work also with animals. And I, we don't see a, a, a lot of um, um, contrast be, be, between Sabins and uh, Romans of um, Latin colonists, because uh, not, naturally they lost the property of the, the field, but um, they still remain there. They don't, the Sabins don't abandon the villages. The villages still grow. And they have uh, also um, this villa system with the colonization. We have also not with the, like the um, Colonia Viritana, but in the first century BC, we start to see villas. But the villa system is not um, good in this landscape. So these villas are abandoned in the first century BC, AD. Only one remains after, and maybe it's a, an imperial property. And this is why uh, it stays still also in the second and third century AD. But the only system good in this type of landscape is small village, ships, and uh, no, also now. And so do you also think that the, what about the social relationship between the, the new colonists and the indigenous in inhabitants? Do you also think that this is a more, um, let's say, fluid or at least less aggressive impact on the landscape and on the existing um, societies? I think there was a sort of um, convivence because the colonists need the Sabins to, to, to live. They also have to, to, when they produce something, they have to, um, to sell. And they also have to, to, um, to buy from Sabins. So I think they quite, quite um, um, uh, easier, the, quite at the beginning, they start to mix. And this is the same we can say not to make naturally another period, but when the long because we are also the Lombard uh, face, and when the Lombard come to uh, Sabi, the Roman Sabina, in one or two the gener generation they mix. So we have Lombard people with uh, Roman wives, and and we can say it also from the analysis of the necropolis because. And now we start a new project with the necropolis of Kasha, with the Sovrintendenza, to study the relationship between Sabines and Romans from the 6th century BC to the 3rd century BC, and to understand how also the material culture um, changes. The problem is naturally we are 
our idea of people in the sex, uh, six and five century BC is also is always a tomb with weapons. But Sabines have no weapons, for example, in the fourth century BC in the tombs. So we also have to have another idea of um, another idea, another vision of these uh, people, because this old-fashioned style that was always in weapons of fighting is not good. It's not fair. Thank you so much. Yeah. Is Marlene ready for a second question, perhaps? Well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, it, this is really just something that struck me. Uh, so this is also about Kasha. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point you mentioned, uh, but quite quickly, or I was not paying enough attention, you mentioned uh, that there was a dog sacrifice as a sort of foundation deposit. Um, so was that of the temple? Is that right? No, it's under the, um, the public building. Okay, because I was very interested to hear it because I know of sort of two other dog sacrifices as foundation deposits in Latin colonies in, in Ariminum and in Paestum, but there I think they're both uh, underneath the defensive walls, so it's really something that happens sort of very early on in the establishment of the colony. So I wondered if, the, is this in your case also really in, in the earliest phase of, of yes. the arrival it's of the, the colony? Yes, the, the phase of the, the beginning, the, the third century phase. And the votive dep deposit is under a door in this uh, public building. Yeah. And it's a small dog barn. And there is something right on the Ola, but it's really, really impossible to read it because there are only two letters. So we try to understand, but it's art. And we have a temple, but the sacrifice in the temple, we see only a fire. Mm -hmm. So maybe they burn something in the, under the, the pavement of the temple, but it's the only information we have. So we don't have a real votive deposit. We have a sacrifice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's it's I mean, it's really interesting. I think that this is sort of the only archaeological evidence that we actually have of sort of foundation rituals in in colonial environments. So so the dog seems to be quite, quite yeah. important in that regard. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, I see Tastek with the hand rise up. I don't know if it is of the Question or well, um, perhaps it's nice if there are other questions first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, can, I, I could go on quite long, I think. So. Okay. okay uh, is there any other question to Francesca? I'm si. checking the chat. Uh, Anita. Anita. Anita, please. Hey, hi, Francesca. Thank you so much. This was a great talk. Uh, I'm just curious, could you say something more about the dating of the centuriation that mm -hmm. you show us? So we have um, uh, four deities in Kasha. The main building like uh, is the Hercules, an Hercules temple and it's normal in, the, in, the, in this area. So we have the big uh, official first temple of Rome is Her from, from Her of Hercules. Then we have these two uh, dub, uh, double cell small temple in the Vicus. And from a votive gift, we can identify one of the deities with uh, Ceres. So we think the second can be uh, from comparison, Venus, Flora. We have a dedication to Flora also, so to agricultural deities. Then we have a small sacred area in the one side of the portico near the, the double cella temple. And we identify it with Victoria. But we know that Victoria is a Roman interpretation of the Sabine deity Vacuna. Okay. Uh, the iconography was uh, yeah. similar. Thank you very much. I, I, I was actually meaning the, um, the centuriation that you showed ah. in this for the second ah, sorry, case. Sorry, I, I understand. No, I, probably I, I said it. 
not century centuryation yes that i was a very very cool no, the, the centuryation was a study that made pa paolo camellieri in the 2008 and it at the at the beginning identified two centuryation but at the end our excavation show only one good centuryation the other is not sure and is uh, with this uh, chippy terminale we can also have a, a chronology with also the position of the re reutilization of these um, objects in the third century BC. But in the third century, we know they make the uh, limit of the tratturo. And maybe the, um, the division between uh, public uh, Pasqua, Pasqua con Pasqua uh, wood, and the, 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 the area to give to the colonists. Then the, the censuration is not the same axe of the tratturo as another axe, but we can identify the axe because it's the same axe of the house, of the vicus, the, the, the street of the vicus, and we can identify it also in other fields in the area. But the, the main temple and the, the public area of the Vicus have not the same orientation. So we have many in, in inter, intervention on the landscape, but two are, are sure and then identified. One is the Tratturo system with the temple, the main temple. And the second is the centuration of the field with the houses of the Vicus and the street crossing the vicus. Then we have the, the public area comes maybe later on, on another axe, we don't know why, but maybe it's also a problem of different properties because the public area of the vicus maybe is not the same property of the uh, house of the colonists. So it's something also different. We also speak a lot with uh, Luigi Capogrossi Colognesi. It's always difficult to to identify um, what we read on the book about organization of the, the Centuriazio and what we see on the field. Because, but I think Kasha is really interesting for this because it's something we don't know before. So the agricultural uh, occupation with a colonial Veritana, with the, what they do to the, the landscape, to the field, the public areas different. And, and so it's something, um, quite new in our bibliography. So I'm very happy to, to finish the book to, to see what people th think about it. Thank you, this is extremely interesting. Congratulations again. No, thank you, thank you. Any other question? Mm. I'm checking also the chat, also the chat but I think Okay, so but ju ju just to finish, I have a question, a general question. <laughs> I wonder, no, what do you think about the, the, the possible development of the research relating to colonies uh, of Rome in ancient Italy? Is any suggestion, any, any idea? <laughs> just now, it's, it's, it's a very big uh, question. I think we we. We need to, to see our um, our data with um, other eyes because uh, we have to also to restudy old excavation, for example, because maybe we miss a lot of information because we have we have was, we were not able to identify. So and also I think we have to um, to share more information, also to work more together with different school so uh, it's the only only way to to understand what the, the what is a roman colonization and you see what is different in the along the sea in the inland like fregelle in near the mediterranean like terracina or in the upper lines like like um kasha so you have so many po possible solution of colonization also in the same period because we are in the, the same period uh, in the same centuries and if you if you if you think about more recent colonies and so there is a lot of 
things we have to rethink and rediscard re and maybe to have to be more flexible because also the Roman system is more flexible than our head. So they search different solution good for different territories, I think. Thank you, yes, was <laughs> just an idea. And uh, uh, again, I agree that uh, sometimes the problem is that not all the data that we have, we have collected uh, are accessible for, for all sometimes. So this, this is another, another problem, general problem. <laughs> Thank you. So if there are no any other question, uh, I think that, uh, that we, are, we are finished. And uh, well, uh, I, I want to say thanks to Francesca for this very, very interesting speech. And uh, really hope that uh, it will be, it, it, is, it, it is not the, the last. Uh, yeah, I will really hope that you will propose us other, other, other theme, other conference. And uh, so I say bye to everyone and uh, leave the, the last word to, to Tess. <laughs> Yes, uh, it was really a great paper, and um, indeed there are so many um, de developments <clears throat> right now, in especially this late fourth and third centuries BC. What is happening in, in different landscapes? And um, yeah, I would really love to continue uh, to um, to discuss this with you and all people working uh, um, on this uh, matter right now. So uh, I really hope we can welcome you one time um physically uh, in uh, the institute uh, in uh, in rome and uh, well the portents are good for now so um hopefully that will happen soon yes i i, I hope to <laughs> so thank you thank you so this was the last installment of this um uh, series and um yeah Thanks again to Francesca and also to the technical help with, from everybody and of course the uh, discussion and the, um, yeah, I really uh, think this is a very good um, forum and uh, I think we should really continue this also next year. Thank you Francesca and see you soon. Thank you, see you soon. Ciao, ciao. Ciao a tutti.